We know how important music is to us, to everyone, to people who don't even necessarily think about music, but it's a soundtrack of our lives every day, um, to those experiences, to everything. It's, music is therapy. Get real. One, two, three, four. The smoky jazz bars to Grassfield folk festivals, Connecticut is home to quite an impressive array of musicians. Dozens of platinum-selling artists have come from the state, such as MDMT, Dispatch, Moby, Rivers Cuomo, Meatloaf, even John Mayer. However, the music scene today pales in comparison to what it once was. way that the um, industry has changed is the size of the companies. Um, 20 years ago there were still a lot of small dance labels, there could be boutique labels um, with indie rock or Seattle labels with a lot of um, you know harder rock and it's much harder today to have a small label um, largely because the costs you can't compete to get radio airplay you can't, um, the pricing for manufacturing is, is, you know, very expensive for a small label as compared to a larger label. Um, you can't get shelf space in the stores. Um, lots of big, so you now have maybe four or five big giant companies and very few small companies. Whereas 20 years ago, you could have a bit of both. Yeah, I think one of the biggest changes has really been you know, the decline of you know, record sales, the increase in digital music. You see stuff like iTunes and Amazon. And, um, you know, back you know, a decade ago, people, if they liked you know, a couple of songs by a band, they had to buy the full album. And now they, they only can buy those you know, select few songs. I think it's placed a greater importance on really bands touring you know, to get their music out there connect with the fans and, and make money. You know, I, I don't think they're making as much from record sales as, as they have. <laughs> Since the year 2000, the music industry has undergone massive decline. Physical copies and sale of music have almost been completely eliminated, and in its place, digital has taken over. Specifically, digital pop singles. Um, music had overnight changed and shifted. I remember people like Lyle Lovett and Sean Colvin, people like that, um, were having hits on the radio. It was still a very friendly thing, you know what I mean? I mean, record companies have always sucked, but at around that time, Britney Spears came out, and I remember Backstreet Boys. Like, I remember, like, all of a sudden there were, there were like, choreographed dance moves and like suddenly there was Backstreet Boys and like in sync. And I think what happened was that was that they made so much money very quickly off of these types of people that all of a sudden they said, let's get anybody that can dance who cares if they're really talented or, or not. It was basically like reality television for music. You know what I mean? Like how TV is just riddled with reality shows, which are, may or may not be reality. <laughs> but why pay an actor when you could pay these people a fraction to make fools of themselves on television? And they'll make millions in advertising because people want to see Duck Dynasty. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. It's dramatically new. It's an RCA Victor exclusive, made possible only through years of research, inventions, and innovation. Living stereo, played on a record. In 1935, Herbert M. Greenspun, an 18-year-old shipping clerk, organized a labor union shop at the main Columbia Records manufacturing port in Bridgeport, Connecticut. 
In 1938, the Columbia label was purchased by CBS, renaming the company the Columbia Recording Corporation. Over the next 20 years, the Columbia offices and factory in Bridgeport became a local powerhouse in the music industry. As rock and roll music swept across America, Columbia Records was at the forefront. However, as the label picked up major artists like Bob Dylan and Simon and Garfunkel, the need to expand grew and the demand for records slowly decreased. The Bridgeport factory was closed down in 1964. The label then shifted its operations to bigger cities in New Jersey and New York before being bought by music superpower Sony Music in 1988. I think it keeps a community bearable. I, I am in a community here, which is a tremendous artistic community. Uh, and what, it is, what happens is it, um, it creates a wave of artists, an influx, where, I mean, you have uh, your music, you have your visual arts, you have, we have a, people in town here who do like couture, they make clothing. And I feel like it's, it's all one. It's all creativity and it's an outlet. And it, what better way, what better community to be a part of? I think you really need to, to let that out. And I think it draws other people in. It's a, kind, of, kind of like sports. It's a community gathering place. It's a place for people to you know, showcase the, their creativity. A, a great form of expression, you know, whether we have bands coming in or we have you know, comics performing on stage or actors in, in theater, just having the, that variety, having those different things going on um, to entertain and allow people a chance to kind of relax. And I think it's, it, it, serves, it serves a lot of purposes. We believe, and I still believe, that it's very vital. It's, it's a very vital part of anybody's you know growing up and I think that that's probably one of the reasons why a town like this still is sought after because there's all different types of thinkers and all different types of creators and I think that makes everything better. Some people pay to go to therapists you know other people put on Joni Mitchell or something you know what I mean and but then there are a lot of people who don't put value in that. They think that it, they think of musicians or artists sometimes as court jesters. They're for their amusement that they don't have to pay. When you communicate with, with real local people who are in the same place, um, doing the same things, you know, in the same situations, um, that, that is what keeps everyone going. I mean, luckily I have a business that does well, but, um, it could always be doing, you could always do a lot better because of, uh, the, of those people that, that aren't necessarily supporting it, that treat it like it's a, uh, a frivolous thing, which it's not really. I think, I think it's two-sided. I think there, there's responsibility on both parts. Uh, I think, you know, it's certainly good for the community to support local business. And on the other hand, it's, it's also important for local business and artists to support the community. I don't know if I would impose that on everyone's responsibility to do so because people do have the right to go where it's convenient or where it's cheapest or where, and I don't want to fault them for that. But certainly, um, I like to find you know where I can support a local business. I will. It keeps a sense of community, um, and it I think it keeps everyone a little more human. <laughs> it's the most tremendous new musical experience you can have. And now, it's available for everyone. <laughs>